Prenatal development occurs from conception to birth lasting about nine months. During the stage, the cells are undergoing processes like mitosis and meiosis to further develop into a baby. Genetic transmission of dominant and recessive genes as well as potential hereditary diseases from the biological parents is occurring, and the passing of teratogens to the fetus can also occur. These are things in the environment are consumed by the childbearer that can directly affect the baby like drugs, alcohol, or pollution. This all calls for monitoring of the childbearer and fetus for proper diagnosis and intervention if needed. Cultural differences in prenatal development may be seen through issues with access to care, exposures to certain teratogens and nutrition that can show different development in babies cross-culturally. It is important to understand the cross-cultural differences that clients are experiencing to better know what may be playing a part in the child's development and the childbearer's well-being. For my prenatal development, I was conceived in July of 2000, where my parents had no prior intention to having children. However, with my father's brain tumor diagnosis, their values changed. While they got ready for the baby, they went to doctor checkups two times a month for the first five months, and then obviously more frequently as they got closer to my birth. I was born in March 19th of 2001, and I was born vaginally with an epidural. Some of the teratogens I was exposed to were that my mom smoked until she knew she was pregnant, which is about six weeks. And then there were some birth complications where my mom needed an episiostomy and forceps and suction to get my head out, as well as I suffered from meconium aspiration or poop in the lungs. However, I came out healthy with the stats of 7 pounds 2 ounces and 19 and a half inches, with all reflexes being normal. Infancy and toddlerhood occurs from about zero to three years. Babies quadruple in size by two years old and are also about half the size of their full adult height by that point. Infants and toddlers are using gross motor skills and locomotion to assist with new skills like crawling and walking. They are also using their mirror neurons to replicate what they are seeing in their environment. Development can be affected by nutrition, so in places of low SES or rural communities with less access to resources, there may be the experience of food insecurity, which can directly affect height and weight. Speech is often created through images and can be different cross-culturally due to language tones. So babies in areas of different parts of the world may babble and coo a little bit differently based on what they hear in their native language. Skinner's operant condition can come into play with reinforcement of the baby's speech from the parents like smiling and clapping to encourage the baby to continue to talk. Socially and emotionally, infants are creating attachments to their caregivers and enduring basic emotions like happy and sad, as well as experiencing the psychosocial um, stage of basic trust versus basic mistrust, where they are navigating how reliable people are and the things around them are, and then toddlers are going through autonomy versus shame and doubt, where the toddler is exploring the world around them and exhibiting self-control and independence. For my infancy, I was around the 90th percentile of growth charts, as well as all of my reflexes were good. I did not suck my thumb, however, I did like to put things in my mouth, hence why I swallowed a penny when I was three years old. Cognitively, my parents liked to keep me up to date with flashcards and worksheets and PBS kids, as well as they highly encouraged talking and babbling. I did talk a lot, as well as I loved to sing when I was in this stage. Socially and emotionally, I used directed smiling, and my mom said I had secure attachment. There were occasional issues with professional non-parent caregivers. However, I did have fair emotional regulation, and there were no tantrums. Culturally, my milestones were occasionally advanced due to my environment. I had cousins that were only a few years older than me who I was constantly around and mirrored everything that they did from a very young age. Early childhood is defined as two to three years through the years of six. In this stage, physical growth is slowed down, but development still rapidly occurs. Children are refining their gross motor skills by being able to run, jump, and climb. And unlike infants and toddlers, there's a bit more bodily control and increased coordination that directly affects their fine motor skills that aid in things like dressing themselves. Socially, early childhood introduces children to new environments and more opportunities to play. Things like parallel play and cooperative play allow children to develop social skills to better interact with their peers. And emotionally, children are also developing the slightest bit of a self-concept and can apply this to their interaction with their peers. Cognitively, children are able to understand conservation and irreversibility. And according to Piaget's psychosexual development, this constitutes the anal and phallic stage. So we see things like potty training, as well as mirroring of the same sex parent when the opposite comes unavailable. My early childhood was highly physical. My mom enrolled me in gymnastics, soccer, and t-ball to really hone in on those fine and gross motor skills. I did have a vision issue with a minuscule cataract, but that ended up being nothing after further monitoring. Cognitively, there was still a lot more repetition and worksheets and flashcards, as well as I began to develop Proustian memories, so I understand and remember my 
trips to Mexico based on smells and sounds. Socially and emotionally, we were very family-centered, and I made a lot of friends through my sports. I was a tomboy, so I wasn't forced into specific gender roles or anything. And then my mom mentioned moderate attention-seeking behaviors, but there were no issues with that. My parents were very authoritative, so they let me explore, but use CPD and scaffolding to help me hone in on new skills. Middle childhood occurs from 6 to 11 in a time of relatively healthy and developing individuals. Children's brains are developing in the cortex, which is a assist with executive processes, and as this part of the brain develops, children are better able to process, reason, and plan, which directly relates to Piaget's concrete operations during this stage. Through myelination and pruning, children in this stage are able to hold on to information and then free up the space for new advances to come. Motor skills are further developed and much more coordinated, and then the development of fine motor skills allow for manipulation of both hands and engagement in crafts or instruments. Emotionally and socially, middle childhood is categorized by Erickson's psychosocial stage of industry versus inferiority. This directly relates to the development of the self-concept, because at this stage, children can understand others and begin to reflect on their own happiness and belonging. My middle childhood, I had a very high self-esteem, as well as I was highly social, and I was pretty empathetic, as well as emotionally competent. Cognitively, I was enrolled in full-time school, after-school clubs, and then my mom continued with summer school where I used basic skills through flashcards and brain games to hone in on those. Physically, I was also enrolled in softball, soccer, and basketball, and my main socialization was through those. And then I also learned to play the xylophone and to write in cursive. I had some impairments and setbacks with a broken arm in third grade and then the death of my great-grandmother, grandfather, and uncle within the span of two years. As adolescence is the years of 11 to 18, Erickson's psychosocial stage is identity and role confusion. This stage of development has a large emphasis on relationships to peers to find a strong sense of self. When the two don't align, that can cause role confusion. This is a time that typically indicates puberty, which not only causes physical development like primary and secondary sex characteristics, but also inflicts new hormones, which can lead to an increase in emotional stability. As the children in this stage begin to enter middle school and high school, they are forced with more complex and demanding school environments that call for what Piaget coined as formal operational thought or abstract thinking and analysis. My adolescence was where I started to see a little bit more of issues. I was only friends with boys um, during school for playing sports at lunch, and my main friends were still in my extracurriculars. I had a little bit of social anxiety that began to present, especially with that concept of imaginary audience where I felt like everything I was doing was being looked at. Physically, um, I had my first bra at 10 and my first period at 11. There was a bit of weight gain throughout my first few years of puberty, which led to some later issues with eating in my high school years. For sports, I was in softball, basketball, and volleyball, so still highly active. Cognitively, I had high academic standards and a search for academic validation through that, and then there was a lot of pressure for academic success for softball scholarships in the future. According to Erickson's psychosocial stages, Young adulthood is the time of intimacy versus isolation, where young adults seek out meaningful relationships and failure to do so results in the feeling of isolation. Socially and emotionally, this is a time of self-exploration and identity exploration, where young adults learn what is important to them and what direction they wish to steer their life in. This is still has peer influence in the realm of the social clock and wanting to hit milestones at the correct time, so to not look behind. Physically, young adults are at a peak performance, but do not, but do engage in riskier behaviors like sexual promiscuity and alcohol and drug consumption. Culturally, this time can look a little bit different in collectivist versus individual, individualistic communities because self-exploration usually connects back to the understanding of one's role for their community or their self as an individual. My young adulthood was very exciting, or it is still. Um, I liked how I had a new beginning with people of the same values on like back home. I got to try new activities like Greek life and a faith club, and then I used a lot of journaling for self-exploration. However, isolation during COVID led to some severe anxiety as well as the onset of panic attacks. Cognitively, I loved my new classes with my liberal arts education. I was allowed to try classes in all different um, disciplines. I ended up choosing psychology with a minor in Spanish as well as one in education, which really furthered my education. Physically, I had high activity level still with softball. However, I did gain the freshman 15, as we call it, which led to a new onset of an eating disorder that became pretty severe by my sophomore year during COVID. I was also introduced to binge drinking and marijuana use. However, that has since slowed down now that I am out of my undergraduate. For client 
application, the stages of development are important as counselors because we are able to understand things like the social clock and where a person, quote unquote, should be at in their life when they come to see us. These stages allow us to understand what conflicts the client is facing and what part of their identity they may be developing. With each stage comes a new challenge, which could be fueling the issues we see within our sessions. Cultural considerations are also important in this realm, so to understand the, value, the values of the client and not to impose our own. Here are my references. And thank you.